Hey everyone, welcome to Earth Science Review. This is going to be on weather. This is air masses and fronts specifically. So here we go. These are the air masses that are generally over the United States. So you got a couple of choices. The first letter of the air mass, it's two letters, is going to be your moisture content. So you got C or M. Continental for C, which is dry, which means it's over the land. And M is maritime, which means it's over the water. So M is generally moisture and C is generally dry. So all of the codes with an M you will see are over moisture, which is the water. And all the ones with the C's are over land. Then you got a couple choices for temperatures, which is the second layer. You got capital P for polar, capital T for tropical, and then maybe you would see capital A for Arctic. That would be like very cold, tropical would be warm, and polar would be just cold. So you could check the letters. So up here, maritime polar, that means it's M for maritime, humid, P for polar, which is cold. And it makes sense because it's like off the shore, uh, west coast of Canada. So this is going to be cold water, maritime polar. Then you got CP over Canada, the land, because it's dry, P for polar, because it's cold, uh, so on and so forth. The two big ones that you're going to have to know are CP, continental polar, comes from Canada, and MT, Maritime tropical comes from like the Gulf of Mexico. These are listed in your reference table on page 13. There is a chart and it doesn't tell you what they exactly mean, but at least you have some sort of reference uh, if you forget. All right, so here's a map of the United States. I just wanted to show you that up in Canada over here, this is where you're going to get your CP air, which is going to be continental polar because it's dry and cold. And down here in the Gulf of Mexico, this is going to be your MT air. This is the Gulf of Mexico, this area. It's the area between Texas and Florida. It's a body of water. It's very warm. This MT air mass tends to come up into the middle of the United States. It could go this way sometimes. And then the CP tends to come down over the United States. So when a CP air mass and an MT air mass sort of meet over in here, this is how tornadoes sort of develop. Uh, this is the reason why this area, too, is uh, tornado prone. But CP from Canada, MT from Gulf of Mexico. All right, now we're on to fronts. There are four types of fronts that you're going to have to be aware of. The first one is a cold front. I'm just going to show you a couple pictures and tell you the little facts about each. So a cold front, uh, the symbol is in the bottom right. It has icicles or triangles on the on the side of it. The, f the cold air is behind the front, and the symbols on the line here point to the direction it's moving. So this front is moving this way, because that's where the triangles are pointing. So this would be southeast movement. Now, if you look at this picture over here, what ends up happening is this giant cold air has a very steep slope on the front of it, as you could see, and there's warm air right here. So once the cold air hits the warm air, the warm air is forced to rise and you get these giant clouds. So you get uh, little facts about this. You're going to get violent, short-lived storms. So this could range anywhere from thunderstorms to uh, blizzards, uh, anything that's, that's pretty substantial. Uh, but it's not going to last very long normally. So they're short-lived. You get... Uh, big extreme event and then it's over. Uh, another thing about a cold front is it brings cold air. Warm front is next. Uh, this is going to be a little different. The symbols are down on the bottom right. They are like half circles here. They look sort of like a sunrise. The warm air is behind the warm front. So this, the symbols point to where it's going to. So it's going this way, which would be northeast. Now, you know, depending on the front, you're going to have different ways that it travels. So you just got to pay attention to where the symbols are. So for this, you're going to have warm air on the left side, and it's going to try to go uh, hit the cold air, but the cold air is too dense. So it ends up just gradually climbing up the back of the cold air. So this is a very gradual process. It makes these long clouds, and you just get like steady rain. There's no fun storms or anything like that. It's just steady rain. Uh, the rain is widespread, meaning it takes up a large area, and it 
it occurs ahead of the front. See, the front's here, but you get all your clouds over here, right? So on the cold front, you could see this happens on the front. You could see the cloud is like on, like over the front. As opposed to here, the clouds are ahead of the front. So steady rain, widespread, ahead of the front. Stationary front is next. Nothing really crazy to know about this, except it's just when warm air and cold air hit each other and they don't really move. Uh, you just get precipitation. It could be uh, different types of precipitation, but generally we're just going to say precipitation. The symbol for stationary front looks like this. And that's pretty much stationary. That's all you got to know. The last type of front is the occluded front. So there's a couple of facts about this. It's a cold air mass and a warm air mass and a cool air mass. So there's three air masses involved in this. So what happens is the cold air and the cool air mass sandwich the warm air in between them, causing it to rise. So it's like uh, the bread and the, the filling right here of the sandwich. It's three air masses. Uh, the symbols look like this. And it brings precipitation like rain and maybe some storms. That is literally all you got to know about fronts. Uh, the next is a mid-latitude cyclone. You should be familiar with what this drawing shows. It's always the same. You got an L somewhere, low pressure. You got a cold front and a warm front, and they make this tent shape. It's like a triangle, all right? So a couple things about this. First of all, all the arrows are in the direction they're going because a low pressure is counterclockwise and inwards. Remember, L-I-C-C, -C, low, inwards, counterclockwise. So if you look at the arrows, that's what they're doing. Uh, the cold front's here. The warm front's here. Precipitation in this picture is marked by like this light blue. So if you notice, the light blue is in three spots. On the cold front. So on the cold front. Ahead of the warm front. or around the low pressure. Those are the only three areas around a mid-latitude cyclone that you're gonna get precipitation. So if you notice in here, there is no rain where the smiley face is. So my, my way of thinking of it is like, there's no rain in the tent. This looks sort of like a tent. It rains on the outside, all right? on the cold front, ahead of the warm front, around the low. This low pressure system, along with all other weather, I'm gonna go back to the United States map for a second. All weather moves to the northeast. So anything you see over the United States is gonna go this way, everything. Northeast, and that's because of the prevailing westerlies wind belt. Everything goes that way. This is on your reference table. It's the four front symbols, so you don't have to remember it. It's on page 13. Uh, again, doesn't tell you what they do or anything like that, but at least you have a reference as to which symbols are which. All right, let's see if we can get some questions. Number one, remember, pause the video and see if you can do it, and then uh, see if you get it right. The properties of an air mass are mostly determined by what? So this is referring to like the CP, the MT, the CT. It depends on where it's formed. So like an air mass that's MT formed in an area that's humid and hot. So it depends on the source region from where the air mass forms. C. Number two. In Connecticut, dry, cool air masses often interact with warm, moist air masses. So CP interacts with MT. Which statement matches each air mass with its usual source region? If you remember, CP is cold and dry. That's from Canada. And MT is warm and moist, so that's from the Gulf of Mexico. 
you will have to remember this. There is no way around it. So CP is from Northern Canada and MT is um, Gulf of Mexico. So C. A large rainstorm follows the usual direction and movement of a weather system across the U.S. Which part of the New York State will receive rain from the storm first? So if we draw a funny picture of the United States, like a box, New York would be up here, right? All weather goes this way, we said. So the people that were going to get the storm first are going to be down here in the southwest. They're going to get it first, and then it's going to travel towards the northeast. So C. Next, the weather map shows a portion of a low pressure system. Which front will pass over location A during the next two hours? Well, this has to do with a combination of two factors. Number one, this thing rotates counterclockwise and inward, so this way. And all weather goes across to the northeast. So therefore, this cold front here, which you should identify as the, the triangles, um, is going to move over location A next. The warm front, if there was a B here, the warm front would hit B next. So everything's going to go northeast. So it looks like cold would be the answer. There is no stationary front located on this chart. There is occlusion up here, but that's not going to go hit A next. So that's out. And warm's already past it. All right, 15. Which map best shows the most probable areas of precipitation associated with these weather systems? So they got an H and an L. And you got A, B, C, or D. First of all, you should remember, high pressure never has precipitation. So the D is out and B is out. So now you got to remember where is the precipitation on the mid-latitude cyclones. Remember, three spots. On the cold front, ahead of the warm front, and around the low. We said in the tent is not going to rain, so this one's out. So C is your best answer. As a cold front passes a New York weather station, which changes will be observed in the pressure and air temperature? If you see the words barometric pressure, it just means pressure. So what's going to happen when a cold front comes through? Okay, if you remember, cold is high pressure. That's from uh, the last video or two videos ago. High pressure is cold. And obviously a cold front is going to make the temperature go down. So it should be pressure increases and temperature decreases. A. I think we got one more today. Last one. There's three diagrams here. Which label correctly matches each letter with the, the correct front? All right, so the first thing I like to do is which one has three air masses? Well, this one, this is occluded. Occluded is the only one with three. So which one has occluded as C? B is a good answer. This is out. This is out. So now we're between here and here. The big thing to know about a cold front versus a warm front, the cold front has a steep slope. So like this one, see how that's like a steep cliff? This is like a gradual ramp. So the ramp, the gradual ramp is always the warm front and the steep cliff one is like the cold front. So A is cold, B is warm, so A is the right answer. All right, I hope you found this helpful and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.